free to shoot me a mail and I'll give you the resources back. A bit about myself. My name is Jonathan Yarconi, 36 years old, spent about half my career in R&D, leading R&D teams, founding my own startup, uh, spent six years at Google Cloud leading AI and ML, uh, met a lot of customers, saw a lot of use cases. And recently, three months ago, I left Google and founded Shujin AI, uh, which does consulting. A bit about the agenda for today. Today, we'll be covering fundamentals, challenges, and personalization. Everything, obviously, is in the context of benchmarking. I believe that fundamentals will kind of level the ground and make sure we're all on the same page. And challenges will really make the use case for why we think that you need your own personal benchmark within your company. If anything you take away from today, uh, I hope you take these two things. One is how to actually select the right model for your task. And as we'll cover, sometimes that is enough. Okay, uh, I will admit that a lot of people sh do end up using GPT-4 and quite a few people actually should, should stop there. Uh, this or generative AI is not always, doesn't always fall under the paradigm of more is better doesn't necessarily mean that if I if I do really complicated methods and I invest a lot of time that I'll necessarily reach a higher performance. The second thing uh, that I want to teach you today is how to create your own personal benchmark uh, for your task. We're not going to be discussing production, uh, but obviously most of you come from R and D and you know that when you're actually running things in production, you should care about how well they run. And without a benchmark, you're not really going to be able to do that. So what are LLMs? LLMs are an incredible tool for developers and business leaders alike. Uh, they offer a lot of value. They allow you to do things like personal recommendations, translations, uh, work with structures and unstructured data for summaries and extraction information, things which were really hard to do before. Uh, we're definitely part of the revolution. And if I really have to just boil it down into two points, I think it'd be productivity and creativity. Productivity is pretty well known. I myself don't 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 budge in my work without consulting with ChatGPT or or a different model on most of the things. Creativity, I think we showcased that in the last meetup, where we really saw how easy it is to take a idea and work around it. If before it took creative people, I don't know, just to create an image would take them a couple of hours. Now anybody can just go into ChatGPT, ask Dale to create an image, uh, but it's more than that. You can actually encapsulate processes. So if you're trying to create a world, it can actually help you create a co coherent world. A little bit about the fundamentals. So let's start. First of all, why should you benchmark? There are a lot of reasons. Um, most of them are not actually specific to generative AI or to uh, LLM specifically. Um, some of them are, it's it's a good way to identify the strengths and weaknesses. Uh, at the end of the day, you'll be serving users, whether they're internal or external. Definitely, if they're external, you want the model to adhere to a couple of things, uh, reliability. Uh, there are ethical and uh, bias considerations. Sometimes, depending on which industry you work, uh, there might also be compliance uh, things that you want to stand. Um, but most important are the two on the bottom. It's your only way to really monitor things, continually improve the model and the system performance, uh, and understand how, how really usable your model is. There are two types of evaluation. Uh, they're not both equal. They're not both relevant at all times. The first is LLM model evaluation. This is basically selecting the underlying model uh, based on performance, whether it's Claude, whether it's GPT, whether it's Llama, Vicuna. Uh, this is the first step where you actually go and select your foundational model. Uh, this is based on some known data sets and known benchmark. It's performed most of the time for you. Yes, you can run a few tests and we'll cover that in a bit. But this stage of selecting the, the main model underlying your system 
is normally something that you do once and and revi- revisit maybe in the future when there's a new model or when something changes in the industry. The second one, and it's what I'll be focusing on today, is your entire LLM system evaluation. Okay, This can encapsulate a lot. It can encapsulate several different calls to the same model, several calls to several different models. And how to assess it is not as clear cut right now. Uh, we're still standardizing things. We're still getting into the best practices, uh, but it's really important. Uh, this is where we take into account a more robust view of our system, both with the model, with the prompt engineering, with the context a lot of time. Uh, and when we do the system evaluation, we can change any which one of those. Okay, so we can hold the model constant and change the context or hold the model constant and uh, uh, hold the con- uh, context constant and change the actual prompt engineering. Uh, just to reference what we'll see in the end. So at the end, we'll see a demo where uh, we evaluate an LLM uh, very quickly. And I'll also show you what happens uh, when you change the prompt. Okay, great. So uh, model evaluation uh, is is pretty simple. I'm holding everything constant. I'm selecting here. You can just see an example between you know what it would look like theoretically if I were choosing between Llama and Vicuna. So I'd have the prompt. I'd have my prompt template. I test it uh, with two models, and I would uh, see the responses at the end. Great. Um. So. One second. Great. We have some relatively old benchmarks. And when I say old, I'm meaning like 2018, I think. Uh, and some of these were created. Uh, they were more back in the day when we were doing LNP. Some of them are definitely some uh, very useful. Uh, they all work in a different way. Rogue uh, measures the n-gram between the model generated test and, and the human produced reference text. Bellu is more about precision, uh, how well uh, the uh, generated tokens actually covered what is in the reference, and glue is already a benchmark. Great. In the old days, we use either things uh, like I showed you before, and in classical ML, we use things like accuracy and precision and recall a lot. But basically, accuracy serves us pretty good when we're talking about classical machine learning. When we're talking about LLMs, the world has changed in complexity. As you're all aware, now the models are the models that we're dealing with are foundational models. And the most impressive thing, other than fluency, is the fact that they're able to reason. Uh, what exactly is reasoning? What exactly is intelligence is heavily debated. Uh, but it definitely takes us to a next level of complexity, which is also why we're seeing the advent of many new benchmark. Here I've selected a uh, select few: uh, Hellswag, Proofful QA, uh, MMLU, Arc, which is my one of my favorites, and an MMU just to to showcase how how quick this space. MMU is is relatively recent, and it evaluates the multimodal capabilities, um, which, as you know, was talked about in the past year, but there really weren't a lot of models which were doing multimodal. Even now, we have. We have, uh, I think, less than five in production. Uh, Lava, uh, obviously, ChatGPT, and there are many more which are said to be coming in the coming weeks. I want to review some of the things. So first of all, HealthSwag evaluates how well NLM can complete sentences. Truthful QA evaluates the truthfulness of the actual model response. MMLU evaluates how well a model can multitask. Uh, Big Bench uh, is rather similar to MMLU. It covers a different set of tasks. This may be in a bit of a different way. Has many more tasks than MMLU. And ARC evaluates how well models can reason. Now, there, there is a point for me covering this and telling you what each of these does because you need to take this into account. If you're trying to... Let's give a very obvious example. If you're trying to create a model, 
which gives answers to scientific questions. And you're going to be checking any anything else other than the arc. You're making a mistake, okay? Arc, for instance, is a set of 14 million grade school science questions. And that's what it's grading on, okay? Every one of these have have their method of how they work. And, and you'll see this in a second. I'll, I'll discuss this. But they're very specific. They use different data sets. They use different methods. And they also have a very different data set. And if you're trying to do common sense, you should use HealthSwag. And if you care very much for whatever reasons, whether it's uh, you have a B2C product and it's customer facing and you really need it to be truthful, um, or whether, again, I'll give the example, which is obvious. If you're doing something in the world of sciences, you're going to want to look at ARC. The rest of them might be interesting to look, but you need to find the one which is most relevant for you. Um, a few interesting things. First of all, uh, I think Big Bench is not as ubiquitous and not as mentioned. It has a very interesting flavor of Big Bench Hard, which doesn't always take into a, that does sorry doesn't only take into account the average human rater, but it also has the maximum human rater, which we don't see often in benchmarks, and I think is very interesting. And the average user, average human doesn't perform as the maximum user, uh, human, and this data set actually has it. Uh, there are many more benchmark, really cool ones. Again, you need to look at them. Uh, some of them share data sets, share tasks, they share methods for evaluation. But you can see just here, just, just if you look at the, the ARC and the MMU, the ARC has 14 million uh, grade school science questions, which have been taken from uh, all kinds of quizzes, uh, textbooks, and so on. And the MMU is only 11,500 meticulously collected multimodal questions from college exams, uh, ranging from six disciplines where the ARC ranges and many more disciplines. Uh, so this is, this is important, and this is where you start. Also, uh, they have very different methods for evaluating. Uh, this by no means covered the differences in how they evaluate, but I just wanted to point out, uh, you're all familiar, uh, I assume you're all familiar with few shot detection. All of these use different types of uh, few shot detection, not sorry, not different types, but like different set of examples in their few shot. And Big Bench also uses uh, COT, which is chain of thought prompting. Uh, aside from it very, being very beneficial, which is an interesting fact in and of itself, it, this matters. It matters to how, how well it performs. Um, and we'll see this in a few when I show you, uh, in a few slides when I show you how how much variance changing a small thing can have on the benchmark. You do not have to run this benchmark at home every time you want to start development. Thankfully, there are leaderboards. There are quite a few leaderboards. Uh, Hugging Face, I would say, is probably the most famous one. It's built on the uh, um, open, uh, open source uh, foundation of uh, Eleuther AI, and it has seven key benchmarks. Uh, some of them we saw before. It has the health swag, it has a truthful QA, and it has the MMLU and several others. Alpaca eval is very interesting because it's an automatic evaluator uh, for instruction following language models, so very specific uh, type of models, and also uh, a, an automatic way to, to evaluate. Um, LMSYS, again, it's based on anonymous votes. It's a very cool system. I'm not sure you can see I hope you can see the photo here uh, where you can ask it all kinds of questions and it gives you the answer based on two models and then you'll say which model was better. Uh, so it's a very smart way to get real human feedback. Helm is a holistic approach which measure, measures several other metrics, which I don't, I'm not going to say only it does, but the others showcased here do not, such as accuracy, calibration, robustness, fairness, bias, toxicity, and efficiency. Uh, it's run by Stanford, I believe. Um, and again, uh, I think these are the ones worth checking out when you're looking for how well a model you're trying to use is performing on a benchmark. Uh, great. 